current scientific view of how the universe began points to a definite moment of creation. Perhaps it even hints at the reality of a creator outside the physical world. For many people today, whether they're atheists or religious believers, science is locked in conflict with faith, and believing in the Big Bang contradicts the idea that God created the universe. The contributors to these programs are scientists who accept the scientific account of the Big Bang, and they're Christians who believe that God created the universe. Our aim is to explore how they hold these beliefs together. We're starting with a very broad question. How do they see the relationship between science and faith in general? Is there a conflict? Uh, it is a broad question, and uh, one generally has to pick words that you're fairly certain that the hearer can understand, and people use different vocabularies. I'm a Protestant Christian. Uh, I'm also a no-nonsense, empirical, experimental scientist. I don't have any particular problem with that uh, approach. Um, I find that my Christianity gives meaning to my science, explains why I do what I do, why it's important to do what I do, and my science, on the other hand, helps me appreciate uh, uh, my Christian faith, and in particular my God, who put reality together in an unbelievably nifty way. Well, I certainly don't see any conflict there. Um, I mean, scientific research asks very specific questions. It's a methodology. And this kind of methodology is not going to work very well when we're talking about who we are as people and how we interact with each other. And the more general questions, what it's all about and why are we here, science isn't going to be answered able to answer that sort of question. So I don't see that they are in conflict. There are possible interactions here and there and as I say if you look at the the way that the mathematics of the universe works and how clever it is you can't help feeling that um, to have this happen by accident is incomprehensible. There really needs to be some sort of mind there behind it all. I see science as a wonderful tool for studying nature. Now as a Christian I believe that God is responsible for all of nature, for the universe we study, for our place in it, and therefore by studying the details it's actually glorifying to God. If you think of God as an artist and an artisan and we're studying the artwork, the details, uh, it's, it's a wonderful gift to be able to do that. It's not always pretty, you know, nature is not always uh, uh, a lovely and, and trouble-free place. As we see, uh, the, the, the mechanics of nature can create wonderful beauty and wonderful complexity, can also allow things that are difficult for us to deal with, natural disasters, things like that. So, so it, they aren't easy concepts. But I have always seen science as a wonderful, uh, God-given gift for studying God's handiwork. And then what we see in nature, you know, while we don't use science to try to you know, prove God or things like that, because science is basically limited to studying the physical nature of the world, I think we can, by what we learn, you know, infer, uh, if we have faith in God, some characteristics of God. And that would be things like power and, and beauty and creativity and provision and faithfulness, things like that. So I have always seen a perfect congruence between a scientific study and then the larger view, worldview of faith in God. I think it's important to to, to not see the theology in one sphere and science in another. At the end of the day, both theology and science are providing descriptions of reality. And so, um, to the extent they're both providing truth claims about the nature of that reality, there are overlaps, certainly, between them. So there's no in independence between the two different um, spheres of science and theology. But I think it's, it's, it's an interesting issue as to quite how close one's theology, and which, which is it that bends, is the science something which we should review as temporary or is the theology something which we should view as temporary and do we have to look for better theological models or better scientific models. Um, certainly one thing which you must avoid is the um, what's commonly known as the God of the Gaps approach and this, this is something which originated in the work of Dietrich Bonhoeffer 
uh, where effectively Bonhoeffer was saying that you mustn't use theology as a, a tool to explain gaps in our science because the difficulty is that as science changes and develops those gaps change, may shrink or those gaps may change and that that's, gives theology a very small and, uh, and um, very much uh, a, a residual role in, in um, the way that it explains the universe. So it's a, got to be careful to avoid God of the gaps but um, I think theology and science are both making um, fundamental claims about the nature of reality. So there, there is an extent to which I think both science and theology need to give. I, I think some people give too much faith in science as being the end all and the final arbiter of what's true out there. I tend to think of science as a subset of the a huge cosmos of understanding that uh, being able to make claims about the ability to understand the universe means that somehow there is a certain rationality behind the universe uh, that also functions in our ability to understand it. It's wonderful all these uh, deep and astonishing things we learn in science, but the fact that we with our human minds can make sense of it suggests to me that there's a larger underlying reality. So for these leading scientists science is a tool that can tell us a lot about the universe but it has its limitations. Science and faith are complementary not contradictory. The scientific evidence doesn't prove that God is real but it can give some hints that point towards God, if you're open to them. Next time we'll start to explore some of the questions about the Big Bang that remain unanswered. <laughs>